you retreat halfway, this is a halfway retreat. This means you don't, you don't have to. This may mean you have to raise your house 14 feet, and this may that like seven, right? And that that may be the benefit of that. When you actually say this is a retreat, we believe that's a safe place to settle in the long run, which means you also invest in new infrastructure, streets, sewage systems, all these kind of things that are underground that you don't see. So that means a retreat, that you actually prepare a place where you think you can stay the next 100 years, which means you invest in that. If the line gets pushed all the way back to 36, that could really change like our design intent. Like, yes. Is there any way that, um, I mean, I hate to say this, but could there be two options? Like, Could we do 50 years and then 100 years? No. Or we just have do to do 100 years. We, we do not want to have halfway solutions. For our discourse and our discussions, we want to show our client and the scientific community, this is the consequence of either solution. It's sort you of like twofold. You should also look at the heights, though. Then, when you're thinking about it, is like, you know, thinking of living on the water and the fact that the closer you are at here, the higher you're going to have to be. So maybe it's like, and you have something that almost looks like the way a pier is built now. Right? Yeah. So, so these, this, each of these lines can represent like different points in time. Yeah. The connection between the house homes is important because if we just let them build just up and not connect to any house, you, you lose that sense of community. Everyone's on their own little island in the sky, you know, up on their pillars. I think that's why we really need to connect between, you know, the old ones and the new ones and really figure that out well. Uh, old baby. I'm making an Ewok for it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm staying in Middletown right now. I was living in West Milford, uh, my um, husband's daughter's house, 80 miles away and traveling back and forth, you know, to the borough hall and all the meetings and stuff. But now I found a place in Middletown that we're renting and it's right around the corner from my daughter and we're staying there until the house is ready. Until then, let's move on. I'm gonna make one more heart. I gotta make another heart. Well, welcome to Union Beach. And I know you were here last week, so you, you've already had a tour. You've seen our <clears throat> our hardships, what we're going through, and but we're coming back. So, and this is part of our rebuilding. So, we actually had someone come to the meeting and says, you know, I don't have a house. Why are you worried about the park? And and I said to him, we can't stop doing what we do. We can't build you a home, but. We can do things like this. And you know, we shouldn't stop doing what we always do to make the town better for everyone. So anybody have any questions or? Any questions? Yes. I noticed on the walk over, some of the houses have like, are tagged with blue ribbon. And it seems they're either like uninhabited or being reconstructed. Well, the blue is for, for hope. The hope, okay. If there's a tree on the plan that's not there, just exit out. If there's a tree that's not on the plan but should be, just draw it in and make a note of like what it is, so identify the tree. Another thing you should be doing is um, estimate the height of the tree. If you everyone have any like instruments for measuring it all, yep. estimate the height of the tree. Um, take the DBH as well. Um, another thing that I think David actually mentioned for us to do is record whether or not uh, the gardens that are in front of the houses are maintained. So you would say whether or not it's it's uh, moderately maintained, poorly maintained, or it's good as well as well maintained. Yeah, just to make sure to see how people are maintaining their um, vegetation. Honestly, in my understanding, most of these things are just berms. But with your building, but the thing is, with you, with this, with this building in of those houses, you are adding a new structural problem. My teaching approach is much more about being the conversation partner, encouraging independent exploration, and um, introducing professional standards. This is, this is not a playground anymore. Next year they will be out there and working. So in terms of very basic professional standards of, of graphic expression, of professional work ethic, and of independence uh, and the independence of structuring the problem. Because I believe a beginning landscape architect who enters the field um, has to know, of course, all these tools that we apply in the studio, but also she has to be capable of structuring a problem 
in a way that the client and uh, or uh, the company that he or she is working for um, get really a benefit out of that workforce. If you cannot structure a problem, you're not really a valuable employee. You have to be able to look at a problem, make it doable, and then do it. I think being a landscape architect, you're, you're really in tune with the, uh, with the environment. And I'm a creative too, so I like doing a lot of art. And it's the one place you can kind of create a, a relationship between your artistic ability and then your, your love for like science and things like that. And it's just, I feel like there's a, as a designer, there's a lot of different places that you can touch on, whether it's like a social issue, um, like whether race is an issue in urban areas or whether uh, politics is a huge deal in a specific area. Because you're, you're interacting with so many different people as a designer, I feel like it's a place that you can create a lot of change, you know what I mean? So I think um, being a designer has really um, changed my life, I guess. Because before I was studying um, science, but I wasn't, I wasn't really feeling challenged. And I feel like uh, with landscape architecture, it's, there's a, a constant challenge in um, interaction between um, the people that you're designing for and um, the environment. And then you, just putting those two together is really cool. What helped me a lot about like the actual studio process is we worked so collaboratively. Like we always had group work, which was annoying at times. But um, I ended up having a really good group, and I think we almost functioned this year like like an more like an office is because um, we had the collective inventory and analysis and you know if you needed something like there was you'd have to go ask a specific person or you'd have you'd have the data available to you but you would have to interact with everyone to be able to get it um, and I know a lot of like a lot of the times it was people asking me questions which I th and I liked how everyone had to help each other um, get things done and then I also liked how within my group it was really like it was really a group design process. Like Wolfram almost told us at one point to like separate and do your own design because we just it was so easy to bounce ideas off of each other, um, and then be able to like get the work done as a group, which is how you would do it in an office. Like you would, you're not going to be there from start to finish. You're going to have to pass off something that you've done and pass off to someone else to finish, which I think is important not to be like too attached to what you're doing to remember like the bigger picture. One option is to actually say we place a seawall and protect the town. The other principal option is we uh, retreat and go to say higher grounds, or we elevate the buildings. When we first started out the design process, we were like, okay, let's raise our homes. We'll put a, we'll put a barrier island and we'll raise homes. But at the end of the day, you're not technically stopping anything from happening. Did you have a chance to see how that compares to the no, the, the newest FEMA map? Uh, where they designated the, the flood zones. As you can see in this section here, um, this was the existing grade where the road was. And we've seen that with Sandy Hook. I mean, it's added sand on. So it could also act as a nourishment area bringing sand on. You just don't know. What we are proposing are floating houses or houseboats and then prefabricated or modular houses. Because this area would have become marshland, but also help protect the community as a whole. Remember that this is all a community and there's a lot of emotional connection and support that is going to need to continue to happen as these rebuilds um, go forward. I hear a lot about these different proposals that the Army Corps wants to do or the towns want to do, but nobody really visualizes them. And when I look and see what that wall looks like, I was like, wow, okay, now I understand what that looks like. And then you can talk to people about what that looks like. And it's very helpful to me as an advocate to know that. Um, so I really appreciate that.